back to work. We've already done three takes. Can we just get this one done so we can go home? Wait, we're rolling? Welcome to Reactor Operations. My name is Dr. Helena Kaiser, Reactor Operations Director here at the Madison Research Center with multiple doctorates in nuclear physics. In this first volume in a series of tapes, we will be giving a basic rundown of all instruments used in safely operating the dark matter reactor, also known as the DMR. Before any reactor operations can begin, all reactor operators scheduled for their shift must be stationed at their designated terminals prior to DMR startup. Please direct your attention to my colleague, Dr. Daniel Weldman, Reactor Operations Deputy Director, who will be describing the safety and startup procedures covered in this tape. Thanks, Aline. Once all personnel are stationed at their terminal, please ensure that all maintenance paperwork has been signed off by the current shift lead before all safety checks have started. After safety checks have concluded, personnel will begin the startup procedures. The lead operator must radio maintenance in electrical room SL-2 to run all electrical checks prior to startup. The lead operator must also radio maintenance in pump station alpha to begin coolant production. Reminder that all maintenance requests regarding the DMR must be logged on the daily operational report. The lead shift operator is assigned to the primary control desk throughout the startup process and will begin their startup procedures. On the primary control desk, the operator must lock all three fuel cell locks by switching the locks to the position which is indicated by a green light. The power operator will now begin the startup procedures. On the grid control desk, using the catalyzer feed water pump and primary loop on the terminal, they will activate all six switches to the on position, which is indicated with the green light. Once all systems are activated and verified, the LIDA operator will now start the DMR ignition process. On the primary control desk, the ignition key must be inserted and turned. After all operators in the control room have concluded their safety checks and are given the all clear signal, the lead can now ignite the DMR by pressing the red button located next to the key. When startup initiates, a 20 second countdown is activated by the facility automated announcement system to allow personnel to vacate the internal structure. When the countdown expires, the internal structure door will seal, and the facility automated management system will handle all mechanical startup procedures. The management system will notify via facility announcement that the current status of the DMR throughout the entire process. Please note that if you choose to remain inside the internal combustion chamber, you'll be at high risk of lethal radiation exposure due to the emission of the activation of the catalyzers. If the system fails to start up the DMR, please radio maintenance to restart all systems regarding electrical and cooling pumps. The key must be turned again along with the ignition button being pressed. Once the facility automated management system has concluded startup procedures, RO personnel will begin normal operations. Thank you, Dr. Weldman. Once normal operations begin, RO personnel must constantly maintain and inspect the DMR on a regular basis until the end of the shift. Now, you may be asking, how do I maintain the DMR on a constant basis? There are a few things to understand about the controls for the DMR. Here, we have a few reactor operations personnel showing us the control desks. Dr. Dave Florm, lead shift operator, Dr. Dylan Orange, thermal operator, and Dr. Meryl Daniela, grid operator. Greetings, my name is Dr. Dave Florm, and I am the lead shift operator during the night shift. As soon as startup procedures are completed, 
I transfer over to the monitoring control desk for the rest of the shift. The monitoring control desk has a few modules to ensure the safety and stability of the dark matter reactor. On the right side of the desk, the shift manager power order request monitors will regularly send requests on parameters needed to be set on the DMR. Tiers will be awarded for completing a request while failure will lead to a loss in tier. In the middle of the desk is the emergency shutdown module. This module is only used in the event of an emergency that requires the dark matter reactor to stop reacting. We will go over this in more detail at a later time. On the left side of the desk is the DMR Chamber Accesses Emergency Radiation Seal, which is used to seal off access to the DMR Chamber in emergencies to prevent radiation leakage. Please note that sealing the DMR Radiation Seal cannot be undone. Next to the Emergency Radiation Seal, we have the Chamber Airlock Status Panel. This panel shows the current status of the DMR airlock. In means the airlock doors are open inside the chamber. Cycle means the airlock is currently cycling. And out means the airlock doors are currently open on the reactor operations cabin side. Salutations, my name is Dr. Dylan Orange and I am the Thermal Operator for the Dark Matter Reactor. On the far left of the desk is the Catalyzer Coolant Module. This module regulates the coolant flow into the catalyzers. Emphasis on the catalyzers. In a nutshell, it cools the catalyzers so that they can efficiently heat the DMR. The Catalyzer Coolant Loop has six switches that allow the coolant to enter the catalyzer. Disabling it would not cool that specific catalyzer. The two outtake valves allow coolant into the catalyzers. At least one outtake valve must be activated to allow coolant to enter the catalyzers. Do note that even if all six catalyzer coolant loops are online, the system will not work if both outtake valves are offline. The catalyzer coolant input controls control how much coolant is entering the catalyzer at the given time. Zero allows no coolant to enter the catalyzer, while four allows the maximum amount of coolant to enter. The monitor on this module shows the current condition of the individual catalyzer's temperature. It is recommended to keep the temperature of each laser between 850K and 980K for maximum efficiency. To the right of the Catalyzer Coolant Module is the DMR Internal Coolant Module. This module regulates the coolant flow into the DMR structure, not to be confused with the Catalyzer Coolant Module. This module will only affect the dark matter reactor structure temperature and not the temperature of the individual catalyzers. This module is easy to operate as the module is similar to the Catalyzer Coolant Module. For coolant to enter the dark matter reactor, pump outlets 1 and 2 need to be switched on along with regenerator loops 1 and 2. The DMR internal cooling loop input allows how much coolant is entering the DMR at the given time. Zero allows no coolant to enter the DMR, while four allows the maximum amount of coolant to enter the DMR. Off to the right of the DMR internal coolant module is the emergency fire suppression system. We will go over this module at a later time. On the far right of the thermal desk is the relief valves. This module only has four valves and activating each of them will release the internal pressure within the DMR, therefore cooling the structure. After the activation of an individual valve, the valve will cool the DMR for approximately 60 seconds along with a 60 second cooldown period after the end of activation. Do note that after activating a relief valve cannot be manually disengaged, rather it will automatically disengage after the 60 second activation period. Good day, I am Dr. Meryl Daniela, and I am the Grid Manager for the Dark Matter Reactor. Before I explain the modules for the Power Desk, I would like to mention that all the modules for this desk are dependent on each other, meaning that all of them interact with each other. The Catalyzer Control Toggle located near the center of the desk switches the Catalyzer Mode from Fine Control to Global Control. By flipping this switch to the left, the system will toggle to the Fine Control setting. Fine Control will specifically set the individual catalyzers at a specific percentage of how much heat is entering the DMR at the given time. By flipping the same switch to the right, the system will toggle to the Global Control setting. The Global setting will control all of the catalyzers at the same time, equally giving the same amount of heat for each catalyzer. Do note that this module can be toggled from Global Control to Fine Control once every 30 seconds after switching. 
On the right of the catalyzer control toggle is the catalyzer controls. This system will only be activated if the toggle is set to global. Similarly, with the coolant controls, switching to zero will allow the bare minimum amount of heat to be transferred into the DMR, while four will allow the maximum amount of heat to enter the DMR. On the far left of the catalyzer controls is the catalyzer manual controls. This system will only be activated if the toggle is set to individual. The six individual catalyzer settings will allow that specific catalyzer how much power is used to heat the DMR. Five indicates the max amount of power, while one indicates the minimum amount of power. Congratulations, Reactor Operator! You have completed the introductory lesson on DMR mechanics. Before you take your certification exam, please ask your instructor any questions regarding the material covered in this video. Once you pass the exam, you will be immediately sent to our next lesson regarding DMR maintenance. On behalf of the Reactor Operations Department and the Quantum Corporation, we wish you good luck on your journey of becoming an operator, and I look forward to working with you in the future. At this time, your instructor will be passing out an Introductory to DMR Mechanics post-exam. As a reminder, you are required to pass with a 90% on this test. If you have any questions, please refer them to your immediate supervisor. Good luck!